This is the Fundamental Escape Podcast with your host, Mark Fitzgerald. I'm David Werba, and this is episode 10. Mark, we made it. Well, thanks to my superior production skills, <laughs> we made it to episode 10. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So we finally have our first atheist on the show, Hemant Mehta, who's an author, blogger, and a regular speaker at atheist events across the United States. Now, he made a lot of good points in the show that I respect, but he also made some bad points that kind of bothered me. He said he knows a lot of disgruntled atheists who seem to dislike the church more than they want to be an atheist. I respect that he offered that knowledge to the show, because I'm sure a lot of people, once they break away from the church, they kind of go overboard and become an atheist almost to try and punish the church in some way. But then he goes on to reach like these fuzzy conclusions such as 65% of Americans believe the book of Genesis is truth. And if I were to guess, I would say it would be less than half that. He also says, don't put stock in something that can't be challenged. And when I first listened to that a few days ago, I was just sitting there scratching my head and now, a few days later, I'm still sitting here scratching my head. <laughs> yeah. And probably what bothers me the most is the way Hemant generalizes too much. He, he says, all Christians do this, all Christians do that, and they're all in it together. It's like, I mean, I'm just sitting here listening. I'm like, come on, man. I'm like, you can't, you can't do that. Yeah, well, I, I think the, the word that comes to mind for me is the whole concept of narrative and the the story that we kind of tell ourselves about the world and the way things work and i think for him and essentially he is an atheist blogger at the end of the day and so his job is to keep content flowing that essentially upholds his narrative if that makes sense and you know i did sort of challenge him in the conversation about the fact that he's just going for all this low-hanging fruit and these people that are kind of buffoons and easy to target and it's in many ways a lot of that stuff to me personally is just not compelling at all uh in saying that i i do have to highlight the fact that we did have a good conversation it was very engaging he is a very friendly person as his uh, blog suggests, but at the same... No, it was a great chat. I mean, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed listening to you. I, I've wanted to dig deeper into these topics for years, but it seemed like he he almost wanted to disagree with you. Like he wanted to create a more heated debate. Um, I don't know why. I don't think... I don't even think that has anything to do with like religious belief. I think that's just the type of person he is. But even though Hemant kind of lost me at times, he came back with these really great points. And probably my favorite one was when he offered the point about Richard Dawkins, where he says, everything that Richard Dawkins says is not necessarily true just because he's a leader of the atheist activist movement. And he would like to see more of that perception in Christians towards the leaders of the mega churches or just Christianity worldwide. And he's right. He's ex exactly right about that. But let's just get to the show with Hemant Meta. Cool. Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Fundamental Escape podcast. Uh, my special guest today is Hemant uh, Meta, who is the first atheist on the, on the show. Do you want to introduce yourself there, Hemant? Sure. Uh, so my name is Hemant Mehta, and I run FriendlyAtheist.com, which is kind of a uh, website for all news stories that atheists might be interested in, or at least as much as I can cover. Um, so I have a team of writers who who conduct, who write a bunch of stories. Uh, I also do uh, the Atheist Voice channel on YouTube, and I do something called the Friendly Atheist Podcast, because I gave up trying to come up with a new name. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Now, the whole, I guess, the place I'd be keen to begin is your title, Friendly Atheist. Yeah. I'm, I'm sort of curious as to the origins of that name. <laughs> sure. The The title came because several years ago, uh, when I was trying to figure out a name for a website, uh, I remember seeing in the news so many stories about 
atheists like Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens, and everyone described them as angry atheists, militant atheists, staunch atheists. It's never anything happy. It's never smiling atheist, you know? And the weird thing is I surround myself by so many atheists and most of them are fine. They're really nice, happy people. So I really didn't understand where this nasty stereotype was coming from. So I figured, okay, well, if I'm going to have a website and I want people to say its name, I'm going to force them to put two happy words together then, you know? <laughs> I like it. I like that it. That was really it. In retrospect, I don't know if it, it's a good idea because I get angry about stuff and then people are like, uh, you shouldn't say that because you're supposed to be friendly. Well, it doesn't mean I can't criticize things, you know? Yeah. Well, you you certainly do voice a lot of criticism towards Christianity, as I've noticed on your, uh, on yeah. your blog. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Um, I find it curious, you know, to me, I mean, I grew up extremely religious. I grew up in the church, like Christian. Yeah. And part of the conversation I'm hoping to sort of generate with my podcast is to create space for people to sort of work things out and ask questions and have doubts and all that sort of thing. I, I don't know a lot about you and where you came from. Like, did you grow up religious at all? I did. I grew up in a religion called Jainism, which is J-A-I-N, smaller Indian religion. And uh, I just started having doubts about it when I was about 14 years old. And that process of questioning and exploring, I realized it wasn't just my religion that I no longer believed in. It was religion, period. And so, yeah, I went through that process. And maybe that's partly why I don't have that much baggage against Christianity, per se, um, like, it doesn't have any special meaning to me other than it's the dominant religion in the United States. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of where, that's where my basis is coming from here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I just sort of wonder some of the stories you pick up on, like Josh Duggar and all those kind of yeah. things. It, it seems like that's very easy pickings in a way. Yeah. As opposed to what, though? Well, I sort of just, well, yeah, interesting question. <laughs> I guess it's to isolate those sort of incidents and those people. I, I and, guess with the Josh Duggar story in particular, it's not that so many people are like him. It's that he is a well-known Christian who gets held up in certain circles as coming from this Duggar family that has these Christian family values. Um, so part of it is that they are popular. They have their TV show. They're well known, and they're. But what really un upsets me about him isn't just that he's famous; it's that he, him specifically, he's worked for a group that tries to pass legislation to stop gay rights because, for him, being gay is immoral, and that's like hurting families and hurting society. So when he does something really ridiculous. That is hypocrisy. And I want to see Christians say, you know what? We are no better at this marriage thing than anybody else is. Gay couples, uh, like, why, why are we going after gay couples for ruining marriage when we ought to get our own house in order? It's yeah. that hypocrisy that really upsets me. That's why I wanted to highlight the Duggar story. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and let me just say, like, I couldn't agree with you more, like, genuinely heterosexual marriage is doing a fine job on its own of mm -hmm. giving barity marriage a bad name. But like, I just sort of wonder like the, the sort of reasoning behind your stories and what you do. Sure. Um, so let me give you a, a kind of gist of what I'm looking for, I guess, when I'm writing a story. If, for example, if a random pastor gets arrested, um, that may not be that big of a deal. If a pastor gets arrested for doing something that he's been speaking out against his whole life, that is a hypocrisy that I want to highlight, mostly because I want Christians to realize that, again, it's that holier-than-thou attitude that I often see from religious people, that if you have our morality and you believe in the God we believe in, you would be a better person. And that's absolutely <laughs> not true. And unfortunately, look, like, I actually step away from a lot of the philosophy. I'm not really interested in arguing with anyone about whether or not God exists. Um, to me, that's just not a very interesting and solvable debate. So what I focus on a lot more is the effect 
that religion has on society. Um, and if your religion teaches you to treat other people really poorly, as like the American Christian church has uh, treated gay people and, and a lot of people I'm close with, um, I want to highlight that and say, look, if you're Christian, don't be like these people. And when I say these people, it's not like a fringe group of people. We're talking several tens of millions of Christians who hold the same hmm. beliefs and, you know, extol the same virtues. Um, it's not like I'm saying Westboro Baptist Church, the people who protest funerals, certainly they don't represent other Christians. But people like Josh Duggar, there's a reason those people are popular. And so if there's a story that kind of highlights that, this idea that you shouldn't be supporting these people, including, for example, famous pastors who make millions of dollars uh, and then hide all of that information from their own church. Um, that happens so much in evangelical Christian churches. You don't know how much they make, and they say, well, we don't have to tell you. Maybe not, but shouldn't you tell your congregation? Shouldn't they know where their money's going? And they don't, because they just hide it. It's a small group of people who know this information. That, to me, is something Christians ought to be upset about, and I don't hear nearly that much outrage coming from within those circles. So if they're not going to do it, I might as well do it. Yeah, right. No, I, I totally, yeah, I guess I hear what you're saying. I, I mean, I think of, for example, someone like Mark Driscoll in Seattle. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a big scandal with his book and finances and all that sort of thing. Are you suggesting I should not talk about Driscoll? I don't no. want to get you wrong, so I want to figure out where you're getting. No, 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 not at all, not at all. I guess if these people, well, one thing that, that I think is, you know, if these people are sitting in these churches and not asking the questions, then why bother asking it on their behalf? Hmm. Because I think they deserve to know that they're being fleeced if they are. Same thing as people who go to psychics. Like, you should know that this is all a scam. Um, if it makes you happy, fine. But I want you to know it's not real and they're scamming you. And you deserve to at least know that uh, from like an outside source that hopefully you could trust. Um, and then if you know it's a scam and you still want to play the game, fine, that's your decision. No one's stopping you from going to these churches and giving these people your money. But you know what? Like they deserve to at least know the full story and not just what they're hearing from people like Driscoll. Um, that's my problem with people like him because I don't trust the guy. I don't think maybe trust isn't the right word with him per se. Um, I don't think what he's doing represents even the Christianity a lot of other Christians believe. And I think it's harmful. And I think when you're in that world, when you're in that bubble of his church, you assume that any criticism of someone like Driscoll is just Christian persecution. And it's, <laughs> yeah. they're just out to get you. And like, no, that's not the case. Believe me, there are a lot of really good churches out there I disagree with their theology, but I have no problem with those churches. Like, man, if those people are doing charity work, if they're doing good things, if they feel better as a result of going there, fine. I don't really care about that, I, even if I disagree about God. But I think Driscoll's church is doing a lot of damage. And sometimes you got to, like, shake people out of their system because they haven't heard criticism like that before. Um and hopefully they realize, look, we're not doing this because you're Christian. We're doing this because he's a jackass. <laughs> right, right. I suppose, again, I find myself totally agreeing with the premises you're bringing to the table. I really do. As I say, I grew up in the church yeah, so all my where, life. Where do, we where do we disagree on this stuff? <laughs> we just want to get straight to the disagreement. No. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm curious. What, what is it that we... Yeah, what is it that you disagree with that I do or that you think I go too far on? First of all, I suppose, again, agreeing with the premises, but just curious as to, I'm curious as to know what sort of responses you get through what you do, both from the Christian world or the religious world and from the atheist world. Do you get positive sure. and negative feedback from both? I always get negative feedback on everything because that's the nature of the internet and what I do. Um but that anyone can say that too. I will say that, yes, most of the time atheists agree with me. That's not a surprise to anybody. Um, but more often than not, when I hear from Christians, I'm hearing from them because they're saying, 
I agree with what you're saying about like someone like Driscoll. Um, I wish other Christians were saying the same thing. Again, I think every Christian who reads my site will know, yeah, we disagree about the God issue. But the question is, you know, how do I treat people who are Christian on LGBT issues, for example? Uh, just this, I think earlier today, for example, there was a church that got that is accepting of gays and lesbians, and they got vandalized. That's a horrible, horrible thing. I want to see that church come together. And in fact, the article that we posted said, look at the awesome way they responded in, to this vandalism. In other instances, when churches have gotten vandalized, uh, we actually raised money on my site to give to those churches. Because again, we can disagree on theology, but if you're a good church, if you're good people and you're doing the right thing, I can look past that. Um, but when your theology is genuinely hurting other people, I feel that's fair game and that deserves to be criticized. I don't care if it's well-intentioned. Um, someone needs to call you out on that. You know what I mean? That's kind of where I come from on a lot of these stories. And I think a lot of the, to go back to your question, when I hear from Christians, a lot of them understand where I'm coming from on that front. And they say, yes, this is something that needs to be called out within the church. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It, it does. Don't get me wrong. It totally does. But I mean, that sword cuts both ways. I mean, how so? how, well, I mean, how, for example, you know, you mentioned a church being vandalized and, you know, you being supportive of them because they were, you know, pro LGBT. Well, what do you do with a church that believes, for example, biblically that being gay is wrong, yet they were sure. vandalized? And, then I yeah. would absolutely condemn that as well. I'm sorry if I didn't give that impression. <laughs> That's awful too. Now, I will say that if a church that uh, opposes gay marriage, if they got vandalized, absolutely, I would condemn that. If if it was thought that an atheist did the vandalizing, then I would do everything I can to, if it was raising money or something like that, we would do that too. Um, sure. It would be a lot harder to get atheists on board to giving money to that sort of church. But <laughs> I feel like, um, in fact, I think that was one of the churches that we raised money for. I don't actually think I know what their position was on these issues. Um, that's irrelevant. Yeah. The point is that I, I was trying to make there is we, we, I respect the right of everyone to believe what they want to believe and go to church service, and they should be able to do that safely without worrying about anything. Um, that's totally different. I mean, look, if a church is getting vandalized, obviously I oppose that, and I want to see that righted. Um, I might step in in some way if I thought an atheist did it to try to fix that. You know what I mean? Whatever I could do. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I One thing that's quite interesting to me is the nature of belief and where does belief come from? I mean, there's this sort of perception that, you know, atheists are coming from a place of complete logic and religious people are coming from a place of complete emotion and whatnot. And I just don't think that's the case. I think we're all human. I think we all want to believe certain things, whether they're logically true or not. And I think there needs to be a balance in exposing that reality yeah i think i'm with you about halfway there which is to say i know a lot of <laughs> i know a lot of atheists who are not very logical uh, absolutely <laughs> and i know a lot of christians who have put a lot of time and thought into their beliefs and they decided that uh religion or they they decided that belief in god and specifically christianity was the right way forward um, I think they're wrong, but I respect that that they actually tried to think about this stuff. You know, um, I would disagree on the sen in the sense that uh, I don't think the evidence is there to say Christianity is true. I think if you look for the evidence, you're going to find that it just doesn't exist, and that's why I'm an atheist. Um, right. But again, I am with you that I, it would be wrong for any atheist to say we are automatically smarter than religious people because <laughs> we are atheists. And believe me, I've heard that. It just, um, or that yeah. we have a higher IQ. Um, like, those things are ridiculous. And believe me, we I've called people out on that, too. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to be, just to let you know, well, actually, I should have said this at the beginning of the conversation. Yeah. I used to be a street evangelist for about five years. Okay. 
I followed Ray Comfort, who I know you're familiar with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, I followed him 100%. I subscribed to his teaching, you know, wholeheartedly. And I used to come across atheists on the street all the time when I was out preaching. And, yeah. you know, most of them that I came across, and this is only my personal experience, but most of them, when I got talking to them, turned out to be just burnt out evangelical Christians. They turned out to be what? Just basically burnt out ex-Christians, essentially. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I know that's a generalization that a lot of people, you know, kind of throw out. They're like, oh, what happened to you? You know, what what went wrong? And, you know, all that kind of condescending rhetoric. But that's, that's genuinely what I came across. And mm -hmm. it, it's... I don't know. I don't disagree with you. There's certainly a lot of a lot of atheists who are just kind of disgruntled and fed up with the church, and it's not because necessarily they have logical reasons per se. They might dislike the church more than they've thought about being an atheist. Yeah, sure. I did watch one of your videos, and I yeah. I, I want to say this as diplomatically as possible. <laughs> yeah, I watched the video that you did. I think it was titled something along the lines of, you know, how do you know if you're a real atheist and not just going through a phase? Yeah, yeah. And I feel kind of harsh saying this to you, but I found oh, it, I found it rather condescending. And and here's the, well, here's the ironic part. I didn't find it condescending towards religious people. I found it condescending towards other atheists. And I'm saying okay. this as someone who's not an atheist. Yeah, yeah. How so? I, I just felt like it was, I, I don't know, like to me, the I, I find it troublesome the, the, even needing the label atheist. Like for me, if I, I just wonder what, I, I suppose I'm trying to get my head around, again, going back to your intention. Like when you make a video like that, what is your intention? Sure. Um, well, that specific video, this is something a lot of young atheists hear all the time from their parents which is to say they think that they figured out religion doesn't make any sense and they want to tell people about it. They'll come out to their parents or something and their parents think they are simply rebelling, that they just, oh, you think church is boring and that's why you want to be an atheist. And it's not. For a lot of these kids, they've read up on it. They've been doing the research and to them, atheism makes sense. So it's kind of insulting when someone says you're just going through a phase. So the point of that particular video was to say, how do you know this isn't just a phase? How do you know, like, this isn't you just rebelling or something that you'll grow out of in a few years? And I offered some examples of how you might know uh, you're, it, this is something that's probably going to last for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, some of the examples we gave for that is, you know, you're not afraid of hearing information that might prove you wrong. Um, yeah. And for example, uh if you hear someone say, I have an argument for why God exists, um, hopefully you would say, yeah, fine, bring it on. I'm, I'm ready to listen to it. But I often, that's not always the case when it comes to the religious world, which is if there's something that contradicts your point of view, a lot of pastors, not all of them, but a lot of them will say, you shouldn't hear it at all. Um, we, we can't tell you about sex education comprehensively because then you'll want to go do it. We can't teach you, uh, <laughs> don't read The God Delusion because it's blasphemy. Don't listen to secular music because it'll warp your mind. Whereas, like, that's ridiculous. Go listen to it. Go hear what the other side has to say. And then you can decide for yourself whether or not you want to participate in that or listen yeah. to it even more. That's, I, that's the sort of thing I was talking about. Yeah. I, I suppose, yeah I, uh, yeah, I guess I should probably back up. I mean, to say the word condescending is quite... A, big claim but it's it was just my perception and i what i guess what i the, the biggest point I, I mean by that is to someone who's coming out of potentially out of a fundamental religion yeah to sort of be you know invited into the it's, it's almost like going hey this all this stuff you've come away from is utter bullshit like yeah come join us and it, and it becomes almost like this invitation it's like an atheist altar call <laughs> into well, another if, if that's true i mean i certainly don't want to give off that impression because the last thing at least i mean i don't think i do that with the videos in general but i don't want to see atheists do that either because i don't want you to feel like you're joining another 
religion of sorts. <laughs> I want you to think. Um, I feel like with the videos anyway, it's more of me just saying, here's where I'm coming from. If I'm wrong, by all means, go ahead and say so. But this is what I've experienced. This is what I've learned from it. Um, I feel it is more inviting to criticism in some ways. I mean, some of the videos are tongue in cheek, supposed to be funny. Some of them are much more serious. But uh, I mean, just to take that one about how do you know you're not going through a phase, that is kind of directed at younger atheists or people who are just coming out of it who might be wondering, how do I know this is something? Right. It's not just in backlash to I don't like the church. Yeah. yeah. So w would you say, I mean, is there a certain level of empathy in, in the making of a video like that, do you think? Like that video in particular? Yeah, I think part of it is empathy and like, because those are the emails I tend to get in response to the videos. It's from younger atheists who are wondering, you know, I'm having these doubts about faith, um, but I don't know what to do with them. And I don't know if I'm right. Like, what should I do with that belief? And, you know, if I was writing them an email, what I would say is, well, okay, fine. Keep exploring. I mean, no one's making you, <laughs> it's not like you got to make a decision by tomorrow. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah. ahead. And I'm trying to say it's okay to keep asking. It's okay to doubt. It's okay to question. Um, I'd be happy to point you to some resources or something. But some of the videos are kind of directed at things that, and again, maybe there's a difference between, I don't know if you've lived in the U.S. or not, but maybe some of this is just the difference between where we're living. Um, the sort of responses you get to being an atheist in the U.S. is just over the top kind of ridiculous sometimes. And you don't often hear from atheists who say, no, it's I'm glad you're asking these questions. I'm glad you're challenging what the Bible says. That's a good thing. And let me tell you why it's okay to do it. You know, that's that's part of what I'm trying to do with the videos. Yeah, I, I think, no, I do understand somewhat of the whole American Christianity, you know, ethos. Yeah. I think you're probably, in America, you're probably more accepted as a child molester than an atheist. <laughs> yeah, I think there was a study that actually said <laughs> child molesters get uh, higher, like, approval ratings than <laughs> atheists do in some cases. <laughs> Oh dear, it, it gets crazy. But I, but I think you know, and I'm sure you can appreciate that when you're talking about things like belief, you're not. Yeah. It's not just, hey, here's a topic. I agree with it. You disagree with it. It's like you're talking about something that is at the core of somebody's DNA, essentially. Do you think I'm not paying it enough respect? N no, no. I here's what I think. I think, as I said, I I can't say enough how much I do agree with much of the. Yeah. The critique and much of what you're saying i just wonder if you know oh, i don't even i don't don't get me wrong because i'm not proposing that i have a better alternative but yeah yeah I, I i just wonder if we sometimes cut the ears off people who we could essentially help by you know these late i think labels immediately pigeonhole people like oh i'm an atheist oh well i'm not going to listen to you if i'm a religious person or yeah. vice versa or I think I think it's a human problem that we have, and I think it's this issue. I've talked about it on other episodes of the podcast where we have this thing where we scapegoat people. We mm -hmm. we do this thing. We go, atheists will go, oh, you know, Christians or religious people are the problem in the world. If we can just get rid of them, then everything will be fine. And then religious people look at the gay community and go, oh, if we could just eradicate that, then right. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And it's this back and forth. And I just I wonder. Guess, I mean, I don't buy that only because that's not something I say. I'm more than willing to work with religious people who I share common goals with, even if we disagree on the belief. Um, and I'm, like I said, I mean, if they're religious, I'm not someone who would just cast them aside because of that. But I think when you are surrounded by religion and it, it, it infuses your government and it's religious people who are writing legislation that hurts people you love, there is a there is a value to having that label of atheist. And for a lot of people, they are made to feel shamed if they are doubting their faith and if they don't believe in God. And I want to let them know it's okay and that they're on the right track. Like, this is a good thing just theologically. But more importantly, you shouldn't feel bad about being an atheist so, I mean, the videos are directed usually at other atheists, with some exceptions. Sure, yeah. I, I want to talk a little bit about the Bible, and I don't want to get yeah. too deep into theology. 
don't yeah, get me yeah. wrong. I don't. I couldn't tell you the last time I actually picked up my my Bible, but um, I I recently spoke with Jay Baker, who is the son of Jim Baker and Tammy Faye. Mm-hmm. You'd be familiar, I assume. Yes. Yeah, but quite quite a big deal back in the eighties. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, he 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 kind of came out with this statement where he said, "There's two kinds of people that take the Bible literally: fundamental Christians and atheists." Yeah. And I have heard you talk a little bit about this, I think, in one of your videos. And it seems to me that, you know, from an atheist standpoint, to come against the Bible and to deconstruct it and to dismiss it as this is just, you know, this is just an ancient book that you know, doesn't have any relevance, et cetera, et cetera. You right. have to take it as literal. You have to, because the moment you open up the idea that, hey, I personally do not believe that Genesis is a science book. I don't yeah. believe that whatsoever. Um, but it seems like if you want to push it away and argue against it, you're forced to take it literally because then you can sort of poke fun at it and joke at it. And, I, okay, let me let me push back on that a little bit. What percent of Americans do you think believe Genesis is literally true? I literally have no idea, to be honest. T- take a ballpark guess for a second. Oh uh, well, how many? What I was going to say? Can I give percentage another percentage? Um, well, what percentage consider themselves Christian? Well, Christians would probably be. I'm making this up. Maybe. 80% some variation of Christian Christianity. Okay. Uh, I'd say 90% of that group. Yeah, it's it's not too far off. I think it's like 60 some percent of Americans believe uh, man was created by God in our present form in the past 10,000 years. Like young earth creationism. How many of them actually thought through that? Who knows? But that is the belief. Um, so here's the thing. I'm with you. The Genesis is not a science book, but how many Christian pastors are willing to say that out loud? Very few. That's my issue with that. Don't tell me, like, if if more Christians are willing to admit, no, the the Genesis is not something you take literally true. It's a bunch of stories. Um, I don't know if this is your perspective or not, but yeah, it's a bunch of stories. A lot of them are fictional, but there are good messages in there. I want to hear that. If someone says, oh, the whole Old Testament is a bunch of fiction, but all the Jesus stuff is literally true, well, then I want to call you out on that. Um, A lot of Christians will quote Bible verses at Atheist. You're well aware of that. So (laughs) if they're going to play that game, we can play it right back by quoting other verses. It's it's not so much that we have to take it literally to make fun of it or something. It's kind of using the methods that Christians use on us. If they say, you know, if they want to say, here's a Bible verse, therefore you should act a certain way, that's a ridiculous thing to do because I could cite a Bible verse that sounds horrible and <laughs> throw it right back yeah. at you. If you're saying the Bible shouldn't be taken literally, then the second I say, all right, well, that's why Jesus, that whole Jesus story is not true. Well, no, 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 that part is true. It's like, okay, well, make up your mind on which parts are real and not. And Christians haven't figured that out amongst themselves. And what's frustrating is that some of the people in the United States who are setting science agendas, science curriculums, are the people who think Genesis is literally true. And I feel like it's only the atheists who ever fight back against them. And the Christians are too afraid to say anything about it. That's what's frustrating to me. Yeah. So so do you, I mean, do you think then that it's possible to, I mean, you say, oh, well, we haven't figured out the parts of the Bible that are true and not true. Do, do you think that, you know, in 2015 by now that we should have, I mean, do you think that there shouldn't be space to keep that conversation going and keep talking? No, about I think it? if you want to keep the conversation going, that's, that's fine. But if someone who is a creationist, by the way, almost all of the Republican presidential nominees right now, like the 16, 17 of them that are running for president right now, I think, a good number of them are young earth creationists. That's terrifying that they would run (laughs) science policy. And yet uh, most Christians would say, oh, that's not a big deal. That's fine. It doesn't make a difference. And that's ridiculous. It makes a huge difference. Um, So, I mean, I don't know. I I feel that's very justified to call out, not just because this is something Christians haven't figured out, but like, I feel so many Christians are so afraid 
of criticizing people who are objectively wrong on this stuff because they're part of the tribe. And oh, I have no loyalty whatsoever to that, so I'm willing to do it. And so are other atheists. But it's kind of, yeah. I, I get mad when I feel like we're the only people speaking out against it. If Mark Driscoll does something, really says something about women that's really offensive, I want to see other Christians calling him out on it saying, that's not my Bible. That's not the way my Christianity works. Here's why you're wrong. And I hear that so rarely. There are some voices but they're, it's like isolated voices. It's never like a, it's never Rick Warren saying, you know, Mark Driscoll's a horrible person for saying this sort of thing, or what he said was horrible. <laughs> he might be a nice guy, but what he said was completely off track. You don't hear that. Yeah. They're, they're all in the same club together, and they're, they're, they're bad when they're together yeah. like that because they just keep supporting each other. Right, right. It's, it's funny, you know, you bring up the word, about talking about tribes and tribalism and i think that's such a such a key part of this whole conversation because it, it happens to me I, and i don't want to caricature or anything like that but you know i you know we both know that you know there's many claims against atheists oh you're just another religion blah 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 you yeah. know but but it whether you want to call it a religion or not there is this tribalism thing that happens where we're like I'm, we, we pick our team essentially. We go, this yeah. is my team. This is my team. And it becomes a sport. I've talked about this on other episodes That's, of the podcast. I agree with you to some extent. However, I will promise you that Richard Dawkins gets plenty of criticism from atheists. Atheists don't shy away from attacking that guy when he says something stupid. And the same goes for other atheists. And it's to a level that I never really see within the Christian church. But just just to push back again, I mean, just mm -hmm. because you don't see it, it doesn't mean it's not happening. It's not happening from other prominent Christians. How's that? Okay, granted, uh, that's fair, I guess, um, to, to an extent. I, I mean, I do read a lot of uh, emerging Christian websites. I read a lot of Christians who are yeah. feminists, and I hear it from them. But from the top rung, the Christians who get so much attention, who lead these mega churches, they never, they never do any of this stuff. They never speak out against the, right. these sorts of injustices because they're all in it together. Well, it's funny you mentioned emerging because that's <laughs> that's sort of my stream essentially. Uh, yeah. I recently, you know, Brian McLaren was uh, recently in New Zealand, and I actually interviewed him, and we talked about the whole issue of LGBT, for example, and. Yeah. We, we sort of deconstructed the idea of putting people into a victim status and going, you know, what can happen is people go, oh, these poor people and they need, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. There are groups in the world that need advocation. Absolutely. Yeah. But to put somebody into a victim status and, and sort of go, oh, you know, poor them and they need help and blah, 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 blah. It sort of dehumanizes them in a very sort of patronizing way. And we, we talked about the idea that uh, going back to the idea of scapegoating where anybody can scapegoat anybody. And, and, he, and he, he, he sort of responded and said, he goes, yeah, this isn't a gay versus straight issue. This is a human problem. This is, this is, you know, anybody can fall victim, you know, fall into this trap essentially. Maybe, but I mean, I, I guess I'm not sure where you're going with this because when it comes to LGBT stuff, the problem is religion. That's where the... Uh, I disagree completely. <laughs> then, I mean, why do people oppose gay marriage? Why do people oppose gay well, rights? Well, it's funny you say that. Like, I... No, stereotypically, I would have agreed with everything you just said up until about a week ago when I came across somebody who started listening to my podcast who's not religious whatsoever and essentially opposes gay marriage. And that shocked me. I sure, was like, and that would you know. shock me too. Um, <laughs> now, but, but again, I, I would say I have I don't know anything about that guy. I do wonder if he's just a one off, if he's just part of some fringe, whatever. <laughs> um, that guy is not the one making policies, though. I, I mean, I can tell you in the U.S. when people, when politicians say, "Here's why I oppose marriage equality. Here's why I'm voting against it." Um, they always cite religious reasons. And it's always Christians because they're the ones in power. It's always Christianity. It's never anything else. And that doesn't necessarily mean Christianity is false, but it means Christians are part of the problem on this particular issue. Sure, sure. I mean, it's not like I hear any, liber it's not like I hear any atheist politicians or non-religious or ones who don't wear their religion on their sleeve. No one ever says, you know, we should oppose anti-gay marriage because... 
it's bad for society. They never do that. It's always, well, no, I believe in biblical marriage. Who cares? Well, go well, that your it, church. It, it, it's funny, you know, I, oh man, <laughs> I'm going to implicate myself a little bit here. Yeah. I, uh, recently, one of the guys I talked to on my podcast was Gavin McInnes. I'm not sure if you're familiar with I'm him. I'm not either. familiar with him. Okay, he was the co-founder of Vice magazine in Canada. He, you know, back oh, okay. in the day, he was like a hipster and, you know, whatnot. And um, he's very vocal. He he was actually an atheist. His story is quite interesting because he was an atheist most of his life. And essentially, when he became a father, he started becoming more open to the ideas of, the, you know, God, essentially. Mm-hmm. And we, we sort of talked about different things about, you know, why people believe and, and so on and... He referred to liberals as platitude pundits, where he said, and this this challenged me genuinely, because he said, you know, they bandy about these sort of cliches and say, you know, he goes, liberals will say things like, the earth matters. And he's like, I know, I'm standing on it. And and again, he's making this massive generalization. I totally get that. Yeah. But he got me thinking about a lot of my beliefs, because I went... I mean, just to give you some context, I've got family members who are gay, myself, so I, I'm not disconnected from this issue whatsoever. <laughs> and he he really did make me think about the reasons why I believe certain things. And I, you know, for about a month at least, I went on a big rant on Facebook about gay marriage being pro-gay marriage and, you know, you know why not and equality and all that kind of stuff. I, I totally got on board with that for a while. And I was like, yeah, you know, why not? Blah, 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 blah. And then I sort of started to deconstruct it. I'm like, why? You know, like I, I realized, and I'm not even really saying I'm for or against it at the moment. I'm still, I guess I'm still in this process of like asking questions, but it, it, it's, it's like, why am I like, what, what are the implications? Like, I guess what I'm trying to get to is the point of actually engaging with these issues instead of just holding up a placard and going, you know, this is what we've Do you mean like, just so I'm trying to figure out where you're coming from on this. Are you saying... You're trying to figure out what the implications of gay marriage would be on society, and that's not a religious question. That's a question about society, and that's what you you think hasn't been worked out yet. Uh, no, I'm t- I'm just talking about for me personally where I stand on it. So, but I I mean I I'm still not sure where you're getting at what you're getting at. Well, you and me both. <laughs> I'm sort of talking as I go. Um, like thinking- again, to me if. I don't think there's any doubts about this in my view. And it's not just a platitude, like a liberal platitude or something. Um, We've had gay marriage in certain states. It's not an issue. Um, It doesn't hurt. Yeah, it doesn't hurt kids. It doesn't hurt society. It's the same as any other type of marriage. Like that's been resolved. Yeah, I mean, you can say that. And I don't want to get into this big heated thing. I really don't. No, but, and I'm not trying to get into heated. No, no. But I mean, it's not like there's any, if no, you took religion out of the picture... There is no argument that I can think of, not a single one, to be made against that particular issue. And we could do this for any other issue, too. But I feel like this is one issue where the only obstacle in its path is religion. And it's not to say religion that doesn't prove religion is right or wrong. But this is why I focus so much on showing people that religion is not a virtue faith is not a virtue it doesn't make you better it doesn't make you a kinder gentler person i think to be honest with you him and i i don't like i i I, just to be quite straightforward i think this is some like just more bullshit scapegoating because i really do because i don't think this is just a religious issue whatsoever i really don't i i know that the religious voices are the loudest voices against it i get that yeah but they're not the only voices. I know that. And but help me understand that because I, I don't know a single argument that people are making. And again, I, not about gay marriage, but I don't know what arguments people are making that are not religious based. Well, I have, gen- well, I mean, this is where I was sort of heading was I have genuine concern. I'm somebody who, not to go too deep into my past or anything, but I grew up, you know, with just my mom. I didn't have a dad yeah. in my life. And I know, looking back, that there are gaps in yeah, my because being. You didn't have because, a yeah, of course, you know what yeah. somebody somebody once said to me. I, I I've always been the person that said, "Oh, I never, you know, I've never missed out on anything." Blah blah blah. And somebody once said this something to me that just completely <laughs> made me rethink it. And they said, "You have missed out on a lot. You just don't know what you've missed sure. out on." So let me respond to that this way, which is that. If that was a legitimate thing that you're saying we're all better off with a father and a mother or something, 
they've done those studies. And it turns out the, the, the kids turn out fine. There is no difference. I mean, two parents are better than one parent. That is what the studies show. But two gay parents are not better or, better or worse than two straight parents. So, I'm I mean, not, to address I'm not suggesting your, him. And, I'm not suggesting. No, 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 I'm that. not suggesting that you're saying otherwise. But I'm saying those. that's a specific type of issue that is not religious in nature. But they've already researched it. They've already looked at it. And it's not an issue. So again, one of the things you're suggesting is that there who may be... Who are these they, though? Who are the they that you refer to? Scientists who have been published in peer-reviewed journals. So, so but again, th- this functions, this is what blows my mind, because this mm-hmm. ideal functions exactly like a religion. You've got your hierarchy. You've got these people above you. Here's the difference, though. Here's the difference. The hierarchy in my world can be challenged and refuted with good evidence. The hierarchy in a religious world cannot be defeated in any sort of way. But theology has changed immensely throughout the age. But it, the dogma cannot be changed. Uh, it, ultimately, it kind of goes back to, well, this is my interpret. It's the interpretations that have changed. But that's kind of the point, isn't it? Like, don't put stock in something uh, that can't be challenged at all. And what you hear from so many religious people, so many pastors, is let me give you my interpretation of the Bible, which is the right interpretation of the Bible, (laughs) and you're not supposed to question it. Now, I appreciate that you're willing to challenge certain aspects of this. And again, the, the question you're raising about whether you missed out on something and whether other kids are better off with a mom and a dad, okay, fine. But then, again, my response then is to these religious people that's not the argument that they're making. They're not saying uh, we should only do that. They're they're not waging battles for like you know single womenhood. Uh, if there are single mothers out there, they don't attack them. They're fine with single women. They are they have compassion for single mothers. Um, they do a nice job with single mothers. But you would think they would have the same sort of vitriol that they res- they they have a special sort of vitriol toward gay people. You know what well, I mean? No, they, I mean that example that would be absurd in anyone's mind. To, I like mean, of they, course, they want to protect marriage, but they do nothing about divorce. Why aren't Christians calling them out on that sort of hypocrisy? You know, but the, but again, I go back to this idea that these problems are human problems. They're not just. I mean, divorce happens outside of Christianity as well. Absolutely, but the difference is Christians say that if you follow our path toward marriage, or if you you know become a Christian and get married under the umbrella of God, your marriage is somehow better. It's more sanctified. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I know there are people out there that are saying that, but to to generalize and say that's what I mean. Even the phrase when you say things like Christians are saying, it's like no, some Christians are saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I don't not- think it's some. That's the thing. <laughs> this is not a small group of Christians. This is the majority of Christians and the minority, the ones who have positions of power, who have the ability to really get into the media and make this changes they don't do enough to fight back against the christians who are saying all the horrible things i want them to do that that's a separate issue than whether they're right or wrong but they i they it's frustrating to me because the the biggest churches in the u.s do nothing they make the problem worse not better sure and that's a problem with it and that's a religious type of problem there are some churches who are doing it right more power to them i actually work with a group like uh, I'll ask you, the- uh, uh, I'll ask you this question: Who gives more to charity, religious people or non-religious people? I have no idea. <laughs> I'll tell you the answer to that. It is religious people. Part of that is because they can, because they tithe and stuff I like that. I was going to say that, but <laughs> but part of it is also when you go to church, the good churches make giving to other people and helping other people. They make it a habit. So you are giving to those less fortunate because it's part of that ethos, you know, within church. Yeah, That's a sure. wonderful thing. So I work with an organization that tr- atheists don't have that structure, you know. So we don't. We may want to give to people with less means, but we don't have a good way to do it. Other than on our own, we may give to a charity here and there. So I work with a group called Foundation Beyond Belief. And what we do is we say, here are a bunch of charities this quarter of the year. Here's five charities doing amazing things. We're going to facilitate it so that you can donate to all of these. And when we started the organization, one of the things we asked is, 
what if there's a religious organization that is doing awesome, awesome work, like a Christian group that is, I don't know, making shoes for kids who don't have it? Is that a group we could support? And for me and for the people I was working with there, the answer was, yeah, of course. Why would we not want to support them? We don't want them to preach. We don't want them to proselytize. We don't want to give them money to do that. But if they're like inspired by their faith to help other people, that should be something we can support. We actually yeah. went to a bunch of other atheist organizations and said, here's our idea. Here's what we want to do. Would you get on board with this and promote it with your organization? And they all basically said no, because if you're even <laughs> suggesting we give to a religious organization, we don't want to do it. That's insane. And so yeah. it's it, totally insane. And what we said to ourselves <laughs> is we have two options here. We can take the religious charity out of our roster every quarter, or we just move forward without their support. And we decided to move forward without their support. Uh, we've been going at it for a few years now, and we've raised over $2 million, which is oh, wow. a drop in the drop in the bucket compared to a lot of churches. But this is the sort of thing. The, the whole point I'm trying to get to is I don't think churches are any better at doing, at being better people, at having, like we said, better marriages, at having more, uh, being more charitable. They're not better at it. They just have a different infrastructure. And some of those things really helps facilitate these things. Right. If atheists had a way to do it, I would, you would see the numbers, I would argue, pretty similar. Um, right. But the problem is that what so many pastors say is that if you belong to our group, you are a better person. You are not condemned. To <laughs> yeah, help. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Look, him and I've, I mean, I've grown up in the world you're just describing, and I do really get where you're coming from. I, I, I guess I, I feel like I'm on this sort of journey and trying to figure th things out myself at the moment. And, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess just to change gears a little bit, one of the things that gets sort of put across, and I know, you know, one of my favorite comedians is Ricky Gervais. He's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, very prominent atheist. And yeah. he says, to me, he says some very, very profound needed things that I think the church should pay attention to, where he talks about if you're only doing good to get to heaven or avoid hell, you're not right. a good person. <laughs> he's That's like, not you're a very like, good thing. right. Yeah, he's like, you're like Pavlov's dog. You're, it's just yeah. conditioning. And I think, yeah, absolutely. And I heard him talk, I think it was actually with Richard Dawkins, where he was saying about how he goes, you know, how, how in awe of the universe he is. Yeah. And he says, I have more awe for the universe than any creationist or religious person, et cetera, et cetera. And I hear those kind of things as someone who grew up very religious. And I go, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I find myself almost jealous of that sentiment. I'm like, I wish I could say that. I really do. I, I, I mean, I, I grew up in a world where, you know, as Ray Comfort talks about, this world is just a holding room. <laughs> like right. we're just waiting to die. And, you know, I preach that message. I, I believe that with, with everything I am. And, I, but, but again, I've, I sort of was thinking about this recently and I was like, I think, again, I, I think it can almost become, and I, I guess it's an assumption in many ways, but it, it, I think it can become this sort of platitude thing again, where it's just like something we say. And I'm just like, I, I would highly doubt, and correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but I would highly doubt that, you know, every night that you stand out under the stars in awe of creation or, oh, sorry, yeah, creation. No, you, hey, universe, don't get me when you like, said, when you quoted that Ricky Gervais thing, my I kind of rolled my eyes too. Um, <laughs> there is... You can have an awe of the universe, but yeah, I'm not standing outside every day and staring at the space. It's it's kind of realizing how it all works and how uh, the the improbability of our existence. It's kind of like when you first realize that there is something very like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that that is happening and that I'm a part of this. That is kind of neat. And then that, that's I don't know. That's kind of about it. There's a there is a way to feel very important and special in that framework that Christians and other religious people try to do within the church world, within the religious worldview, too. Um, I kind of get what you're saying about it's kind of a religion in and of itself, but I would say it's maybe only in the rhetoric sometimes. Not really, though, because, again, there is no, there is no authority here that we're all looking at. It's not like anything Richard Dawkins says is automatically true. Um, and again, this is the sort of challenge I want to see within the religious world. Um, I want to see more Christians speak out against prominent Christians. 
uh, and I don't see them do it. I want to see more Muslims do that with uh, people who claim to speak in their name as well. Yeah, it, it, it's funny because I'm not sure if you're familiar um, with Peter Rollins. Who do you know that name? Yeah, the isn't he, he, I, I'm kind of familiar with him. He's I, an I, Irish like he's like a, he's got a PhD in philosophy and he studied theology. And I'm actually getting okay. him on the the podcast at some stage okay. next month. But he did a debate. I say debate. It wasn't so much a debate, but it was sort of a back and forth with Lawrence Krauss. Yeah. At um, an event in Australia. And he basically talked about the idea of the what he refers to as the new atheism, as they call it, I guess, being in a, like ill-equipped to, con, uh, to um, combat the fundamentalism it sort of, you know, is opposing. And he used the analogy, it was quite funny, he used the analogy of uh, the movie, is it, um, what's the one with Bruce Willis? The, uh, the Sixth Sense? No, 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 the one with the, the, no, 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 it's like a <laughs> spacey one. Um, oh, fifth Element, Fifth Element. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, and how they had the, they were shooting missiles at the, at that force field or whatever it was, and yeah. it just got stronger. You know, the more they yeah. fought it, the more they you know, gave it attention, essentially, it became stronger. And he said how, you know, one, this approach, like you say, oh, these people need to be called out. They need to be called out. And this is where I disagree. And this is right. Yeah. I guess this is the part winding down this conversation is where I'm kind of pleading with you um, yeah. a little bit. Is like, yes, I'm on board with what you're saying. Yes, I get where you're coming from. Like, as I say, I'm, I'm really glad we've had this conversation because it puts a lot of things in context for me. But it's just like, I think we we are kind of fighting for the same things here, but I think sometimes the way we do it is is not helpful. And I think someone like Peter Rollins, for example, is quite interesting because he essentially he's very subversive in his approach. Like he 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 has no interest whatsoever in calling people out, and he just that's not you know the not his approach whatsoever. Yeah. But he tells stories and parables, and these he kind of puts these ideas out in a very subversive way that kind of get under your skin and sit with you. And it sort of ruptures your belief systems. And, and, are, you and again, are you suggesting that like some atheists who insult believers are doing more harm for their cause than good? Oh, absolutely. freaking All right. So we're on the same page there. I don't disagree. And here's where it gets kind of tough because I definitely don't. I think there is this fine line between criticizing bad beliefs that deserve to be called out um, and insulting people who happen to believe those things without, in a lot of cases, without really thinking about it. I don't want to insult people who are Christian. I do want to challenge and criticize their beliefs when I think they deserve it. Is it, do I often do one or the other? Like, that's entirely possible. Um, it's something I am cognizant of because... Believe me, I know plenty of atheists who have no problem mocking religion and who have no problem uh, just insulting people of religious faith. I don't think that's very helpful uh, to my side. Like, that's not going to convince a lot of people uh, to, to consider atheism, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. So I'm aware, I'm aware of that. Sometimes I do get angry. Sometimes I, I will say things that I'm just I'm mad when someone says something or does something uh, in the name of God. And again, this is, uh, I know too many people surprisingly to my, to my taste who have been swayed by the way, by insults who have been swayed because they said <laughs> I just needed to be shaken out of my system and someone speaking politely wasn't going to do it for me. Uh, it's not exactly my approach. Um, <laughs> and I think if you put me on some spectrum of atheists from, the very meek and mild ones to the very hardcore aggressive ones. I don't think I'm anywhere near the hardcore aggressive ones. Oh, not at all. Um, but I do think there's some value in people like Bill Maher who have no problem just making oh, fun of it all. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, uh, there's value to that. It's not my approach, but it yeah. is, there is some value to that. Um, and I can, since yeah. you, yeah, since you bring up Bill Maher just quickly, yeah. I, I did watch, I think it was, he had, I think it was Ann Coulter on his program. Yeah. yeah. And again, I, I, you know, a friend of mine who actually helps me with this podcast is a big fan of Bill Maher. And there, there was a, there was a clip of him talking to Ann and he essentially said, he came up with this line where he said, 
let's take for example like let's say for example if what you're saying is true which it isn't and i was just like are you serious <laughs> like why do you have to be such a jerk about it like it, it just closes people's minds and so it's I, funny well let me let me speak on his behalf in that i don't remember exactly when he said that but for something like creationism for example do we i mean i don't know it sounds like you're suggesting we take an objective stance like Oh, well, let's consider if creationism is true. It's not. We know it's not. There is no, we don't have to give them any sort of throw them a bone at all because it's not true. <laughs> and you're suggesting, I think, that we ought to consider them because they're humans. No, no, and, no, 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 not at all. Know. Not at all. It, it's more about, again, I, I, I don't, I find these labels. It's a strategic thing that if you just say that, you're not going to win Ann Coulter over to your side if you just... <laughs> yeah, it's it's just cutting off the ears of people. You know, that's what I'm saying. You know, you're just cutting the ears off before they even have a chance to hear what you're saying. Yes. So uh, here's where I would defend that, though. Yeah, he's not going to convince Ann Coulter by insulting her as he's talking to her, but he wasn't going to, and he knew that, and he wasn't trying to convince her. He's trying to convince the, the viewers out there who may be on the fence on this issue. I just think it comes off really pretentious, though. It totally does, and believe me, that's the criticism that I hear of it's him all the time. It's so crazy. Um, he comes across so pretentious, and I think, it, I don't know. It's, you know I, don't, anyway. I don't necessarily disagree with you. I don't buy it myself, but I get where you're coming from, but... Mm. I can find you dozens, I mean, just give me a day, I could find you so many people who have changed their mind on God because of him, and yeah. because of oh, Dawkins for sure. and Hitchin. But again, you know this I mean? is, it's interesting you say that, because I think that opens up a whole other conversation we might have to have in the future. Sure. But and, and believe me, I'm sure you could find people who have been converted uh, absolutely. to Christ But this is, you know, people. and again, <laughs> going back to someone like Peter Rollins, you know, he, yeah. he talks about the nature of belief and the fact that we want to believe. He says... He goes, give me perfect teeth in a white suit and I'll get anyone to believe. Yeah, yeah. Do you know There's, what I'm saying? Like, yes. It, it, it's this thing that we want to believe certain things. And I think it's, I mean, for me, I've gone into detail in some of you know, my other conversations. But, you know, it was, you know, I, I spent, like I say, five years just following Ray Comfort, for example, yeah. <laughs> just religiously. And it took a minute. I basically had a burnout, I, like a breakdown. I just burnt <laughs> out. Like yeah. literally, you know, it was, it was very intense. And, um, and if, and, and if, if it wasn't for that reality, you know, I would still be stuck in that mindset. And I'm absolutely grateful that I essentially, you know, it is almost like coming out of the matrix. <laughs> You're just like, wow, I can think I can breathe. I can, you know, right. I, I, and, and I, I just feel like I know, I think, but in this conversation, I feel like we've both made some pretty broad statements about different groups of people. And that's fine, and and I appreciate that. Well, I would, you can't. Let me let me close it. I know we got to wrap up, but let me close it or try to wrap up with this. If I say something that anyone any one of your listeners thinks is unfair, I want to hear about it because I really don't want to be unfair. Um, and I I really do think that most of the time, I mean, most of the time when I'm posting things and it is criticizing religion, I do think it's fair game. Um, and I think it's a fair criticism that we offer. And if it's not, uh, I, I really do want to hear from people and try to get a better understanding of why it's unfair. Uh, occasionally, I mean, I want to, I want my mind to change if, okay. if I'm wrong can on I, this stuff. Can I throw a challenge to you in that please, case? Please, please. Can I challenge you to make one of your next articles a, a positive spin on faith and religion? In what way? Like, not necessarily endorsing the idea of being religious, but highlighting, like you talked about charity or something positive where you can actually promote something positive that's happening within a religious community. Sure. And I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm the only reason I'm pausing is because we've done that. We do that repeatedly, um, especially when they do something that maybe we wouldn't expect. Um, but I, I really do believe we, mention that a lot on the site i haven't, when I haven't read all your articles so. sure but i i believe me if i never did that i i think it would be wrong because again like i said religious groups do a lot of amazing things and i think they would be able to do all those things without god too without believing in god they just have a better infrastructure so but yeah. believe me when i see it when i see them doing I, i'll give you an example because i remember this one there are churches that sometimes take the tithe money that they make in a week and they have given it back to the people in their church and said, we want you to take this money 
and give it to someone in the community to help them out and pay it forward. You know, we want you to make their day, then come back and tell us what you did with the money because yeah. this is a habit we should all have. That's such a cool idea. That's an amazing thing that really you could only do in a church. Like yeah. you can't really do that anywhere else. That's an awesome thing. I'm jealous that I'm not part of a community that does something like <laughs> it's that. It's creative. I love that. It that's is, awesome. It's, it's, absolutely. It's creative. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's not, that's not the only example, but I feel like I have highlighted that stuff and I will continue to look out yeah. for that stuff. People are welcome to send me links if, People yeah. are doing something yeah. that's worth highlighting. Well, I could be completely egotistical and say, just do an article about me and my podcast to promote it. <laughs> 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 if you've already done those other things. But um, no worries. No, um, Heman, I just want to say thank you so much for your time. Um, it's been really cool to chat to you. And, thank um, you, too. Thank you for well, the invite. This was, it's, it's fun to talk with someone who's, who's you willing might have to, to become our, You back. might have to become like an in-house, in-house atheist from time <laughs> to time. Anytime, man. Uh, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And again, if anyone has any questions or comments, uh, friendlyatheist.com is my website and you can reach me through there.